I imagine that anyone listening right now already knows what we mean when we say HPPD, or at least have a sense of the language in some in some way or another what it means. Um, but maybe you could start it off, start us off with laying the foundation for what is HPPD. Right. So HPPD is what well, it stands for: hallucinogen persisting perception disorder, uh, and it's a DSM five listed condition that has basically four key characteristics. Uh, one is that it creates certain lingering changes to your perception, although it's also linked to changes in your mood and your thinking process and also certain, certain somatic sensations, uh, that these changes cause some distress to your quality of life. Um, they can't be attributed easily to other causes. Like for example, if you have some kind of psychosis spectrum disorder, like schizophrenia or some kind of bi maybe perhaps bipolar, which can kind of veer into psychosis on the manic end, or and that these changes occurred after the use of a drug within a within a basically a reasonable time frame. Um, and HPPD, um, it was basically people have been aware that psychedelic experience in certain contexts can produce lingering perceptual changes. Um, such as, well, I'll, I'll run through the basic visual symptoms that people generally experience. The, the first is, one of the main ones is visual snow, um, which is essentially when your field of vision is coated with small, granular, grayish, kind of effervescent dots that look a bit like the TV static um, when, when your TV isn't properly dialed and, t and visual snow can really vary in severity. I mean, th there's an extent to which everyone has an experience of visual snow if they pay attention, but people with moderate to severe visual snow syndromes will have their entire field of vision noticeably and often distressingly coated with it to the point where it actually impacts their ability to see properly. Now, is this in um, waves or is this constantly? I think that will vary. So I'll, I'll, I'll get on to the fact so that, that that touches on an interesting subtlety with HPPD is that there are, there are two types. Um, the, the first type is HPPD1, which is when, which is basically similar to the classic idea of the flashback when these visual, cognitive, mood, somatic symptoms happen in spontaneously occurring waves that then recede. HPPD2 is when it is uh, a persistent, fixated feature of your perception. Um, visual, and then to your question whether visual snow can come in waves or its, its severity can vary. Um, I mean, undeniably, yeah. I mean, HP, HPPD symptoms are kind of linked to your general level of stress, uh, anxiety, fatigue whether you've taken a drug, for example, cannabis or caffeine. So these kind of, so these like extraneous influences can, can change the severity of, of your symptoms, including the visual snow. Um, I'm not aware of how everyone experiences HPPD, but I'm sure some people independent of these like extraneous influences will have their visual snow and other symptoms just waxing and waning throughout the day. But so I'll, I'll talk about the other visual symptoms now. Um, so you have visual snow. Another big one is when a set, it's called halos, where essentially objects seem to have a kind of halo effect, like the ring around angels' heads, like halos. Um, they're kind of these bright aura, like um, like visions that coat and kind of sil and silhouette objects. Um, you have traces, which is anyone who's taken psychedelics might have some knowledge of what traces are when the kind of faint silhouettes of the object trail the object as it goes in motion. Um, you also have other classic psychedelic style vision, vision changes like melting walls or objects seem to move independently in subtle ways. Like for example, one visual symptom I've, I have noticed in the past is if I, uh, particularly in my bedroom, if I stare at um, my cupboards, they seem to kind of waft in and out as if they're opening and closing, uh, which is 
pretty reminiscent of what you might have experienced tripping. Um, other symptoms, there's something called pareidolia, which is something some people might have experienced in day to day life before, which is when you seem to see uh, kind of things that look like faces in objects. Um, so if particularly if your vision sort of blurry, you might see a face appearing. Um, and then on the extreme end, although I don't I don't myself experience this a lot, if at all now, but some people will see geometric effects um similar to the geometric pseudo hallucinations you get on psychedelics um particularly on black surfaces or on carpets or on rugs and then on the very extreme end um you have people where they have constant strobing in the in their field of vision usually in the peripheries or some people report seeing like entities like snakes in their profile vision. So it's really a broad spectrum of visual changes with HPPD. Um, and then as well as the visual component, you get certain somatic sensations that people consistently report. For, for me, the most common somatic sensation has been the head pressure, uh, which a lot of people report, which is almost a sense that there's a hand pushing out from the inside of your head out towards your face. And it's quite hard to describe, but it feels like your whole head is, yeah, just kind of pressurizing. Um, other people report the sort of body high effects you get on psychedelics, or maybe when you when you when people have been meditating, the sort of like prana effect, where where the kind of like a kind of electrical sensation can sort of swerve and surge throughout the body, uh, and these tend, in my experience, to to go along with the visual component. Um, and then I don't myself experience this, but some people report the cognitive effects where it feels like the whole thinking process is distorted, uh, almost like, especially when reading, for example, people report dyslexic style effects where they can't process the information they're reading. Uh, people I've spoken to say that they experience kind of nonlinear thought processes, um, where thoughts seem to go backwards and forwards as they're thinking them. So you really get to the edge of where language can capture subjective experience, especially on, on the extremes of HPPD. Um, and these symptoms are not always distressing, but when they are distressing and they create real impact to your quality of life, that's when HPPD becomes diagnostic. And that's how they categorize it in the DSM. I suppose that, that gives a sort of run through for now. <laughs>